morning, everyone, and I uh, want to welcome you here for our May meeting of the Tobacco Settlement Agreement Fund Oversight Committee. And when we before we begin right here, I'd like to ask Representative Reed if he could uh, lead us in prayer and the pledge, please. Let us bow. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for this wonderful day. We thank you for your love and your prosperity that overtakes the citizens of the Commonwealth of Kentucky. Lord, we pray over this meeting today, Lord. God, it in your will. We pray over our farmers, Heavenly Father, as they harvest their winter wheat coming up here pretty soon, and as they plant their corn and soybeans, Lord, be with them this year. Be with the ranchers, Heavenly Father. Lord, be with all the citizens of the Commonwealth, Heavenly Father. Just be with them this year as they pursue a great summer and pursue a great career in their past, Heavenly Father, and we give you all the praise and the glory and the honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, I uh, will now ask the secretary to call the roll, please. Senator Rocky Adams, Senator Hornback, Senator Parrott, Here. Senator Webb, Here. Senator Westerfield, Here. Representative Brown, Here. Representative King, uh, present. Representative Pratt, the room. present. Representative Reed, Here. Representative Roberts, Here. Chair Embry, Here. and Chair Dossett, present. Quorum. Now uh, we'll move on to approval of our minutes for our meeting in December 9th. Do I have a motion? Yes, sir. Second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor, say aye. aye. Any opposed? Meetings pass. Uh, minutes pass. Well, as uh, we move forward right here. We do, uh, we're getting back in the swing of things of uh, our tobacco settlement uh, committee meeting. And uh, we do have a short, short meeting, but we'll have a good chance to sit and have uh, Brian come up and ask Brian and Bill McCluskey to come forward and they will give their reports, please. Well, Chairman Dawson, it is uh, our, our intent to have a short meeting, but I can't promise that. With uh, been quite a while since we've had a chance to uh, to be with you, but it is so good to be back in person with uh, with this committee and to go over what we have done, uh, I guess, since January. But for the record, this is Brian Lacefield, Executive Director of the Kentucky Office of Ag Policy. Joining with me is Bill McCloskey, Deputy Executive Director. Proud to state, the Kentucky Office of Ag Policy is fully staffed. We, uh, I have celebrated my year anniversary now. Uh, April the 16th was, uh, was one year that I've been in place here with the Kentucky Office of Ag Policy. And as we reported uh, every time we've been here with introductions of new staff, uh, you see we've had some turnover uh, throughout uh, the, the last year. It is now to the point I have hired 50% of my staff and uh in, in one year so i share that with you as both a challenge that we've had to navigate but also as a uh as a brag and uh in a way to brag on the staff for what uh we've been able to continue to do both uh the veterans that have been there and some some they're considered veterans when they've been there a year and three months but we're calling them veterans uh, at this place and others like bill that have been there since day one of the office of ag policy but what they have been able to accomplish as we moved uh, an agency from one constitutional office to another and be able to to administer these funds, these programs, these projects, and these loans to Kentucky's farmers without missing a beat. But it's also a testament to the folks that we continue to hire, that we are getting some of the absolute best that uh, our, our universities are producing, and they're coming to, to work for us. The turnover is something we'll continue to uh, to deal with because when you hire, hire great people, they often get other opportunities and, uh, and, and take those. But uh, I brought a few with me today. Uh, uh, more than just the fact Bill and I like to travel with an entourage, we uh, we actually thought it would be a great opportunity to bring uh, bring some and let you all meet uh, this group. That'll uh, some will be with us long term, others are interns. But uh, first, one I want to introduce is Hannah Johnson, 
and she's one of these that's working on being a, a veteran, and she's been here since August, and uh, she is going to be taking over the role of getting you all the reports each month uh, that are coming out. She is our, uh, our boards and special events manager and takes care of all the coordination with all of our two different boards that we work with. So, Hannah. <laughs> All right, uh, next is Sarah Bryant. She, uh, she was my first hire. Uh, she was hired in May of last year. She is our programs manager, and she is the point person. And I, I pulled these out this morning uh, for 96 CAPE programs, 28 uh, youth uh, ag incentive programs, 19 shared use uh, programs, 21 dead animal removal programs, and 1,080 county council members across the state. Now, that, those numbers were just what we, we did in the last, uh, the last year. So uh, her phone rings nonstop, uh, but uh, she is doing a fantastic job in what she's doing. So, Sarah, thank you. Then I've got uh, my two, two newest full-time hires on on this side here, we've got uh, Jesslyn Watson, who is from uh, Henderson County, and uh, she's uh, uh, she graduated from UK a year ago, had been working with the, uh, the Cattlemen's Association, and Chelsea Smithers, who's from here in Franklin County, and uh, just graduated uh, earlier this month from UK. So both of them join us as project managers, and we'll be uh, working directly with the farmers and the board on, on the, uh, the project applications. Then we we're fortunate uh, we were able to bring on two interns this summer. Uh, we've had uh, good success. We've had uh, hired former interns in the past, uh, but we've got uh, uh, Abigail Mattingly from Washington County. And she waved there, and she is uh, uh, at Western Kentucky University, my alma mater, and she'll finish up this year. And then uh, Isaiah Pruitt uh, from LaRue County, and he is at uh, Murray. And he, uh, he has a podcast that he has done that was part of his uh, FFA uh, SAE project. And I was, uh, I was fortunate to uh, be one of his guests on there along um, uh, back when I was in the, uh, the former position with uh, FSA. And I know a few months ago uh, we had uh, Dale Dobson come and uh, do his presentation on uh, the mental health and suicide awareness. And uh, Isaiah has done a podcast with him on that topic. Well, since uh, since I saw you last and you all were in can I, session, can I excuse you? Yes. We've got one other employee that jumped in the car when I was leaving the parking lot, Olivia Rudolph, Randolph. I didn't, okay, <laughs> didn't. <laughs> Well, great, <laughs> Olivia is. Uh, thank you, Bill. Uh, she is uh, one of our. Um, members of our loan department that works in Kentucky Ag Finance and uh, she joined us uh, a few months ago and is off to a to a great start there so Olivia sorry I didn't even see you <laughs> sitting over there so glad we got to recognize her Brian before you go any further I just want to welcome you've got it looks like you've got a great staff that's uh, working behind you and I want to share with each of you I've known uh, I've known Director Lacefield for many, many years. And no, he will be a good person. He and Bill both will be good people for what your experience that you're picking up, whether you're an intern or you're starting to work there. And uh, you're in a position that you're going to make a huge impact, uh, not only on agriculture in Kentucky, but across the entire Commonwealth for every citizen. So I want to welcome you've got a, looks like a great staff well thank you chairman i i appreciate those comments and uh you you read the room well that is a it is a great group we have working for us well while you all were in session uh it it was meeting season across the state the winter months are when uh, have all the meetings we were back to the majority of these being back in person after a two-year hiatus from uh, the majority of the meetings and it was a great opportunity for continued outreach and education with uh with our projects and programs just want to hit a, a few of them that uh, that we participated in uh, across the state uh, the commodity conference in uh, bowling green the cattlemen's conference uh, that uh, was in uh, lexington we brought our ag finance uh, board and had the board meeting in conjunction with the the cattlemen's conference there the uh, university of kentucky ag econ program they do a series of lender meetings across the state we were able to uh, to be a part of those and uh, gave us a chance to interact with our participating lenders with the uh, 
the, the ag finance program. We had meetings in uh, Owensboro and Lexington. Uh, Owensboro Grain Day, one of the biggest uh, one-day events uh, any of our counties have there. Um, the Wave Ag Lunch with our uh, four river counties in far west Kentucky. They uh, they worked together as an economic development unit and had a big uh, ag luncheon in La Center. We uh, were able to participate with a joint program with the University of Kentucky, Kentucky State University, KCARD, and um, in Grand Rivers with a, a regional small farms workshop. It's a great opportunity to, uh, to spend an evening going over different uh, grants and different programs available at all the different shops with, uh, with folks that are operating on a very small scale. And then um, I'm proud to see uh, Senator Westerfield uh, here with you, uh, Chairman, that I've got two of my Christian County folks, because I, I'm going to mention this one just for a chance to get uh, his name in the uh, in, in the permanent record here. But I was able, after the uh, the Grand Rivers event, to, st- <laughs> to stop in and celebrate the retirement of uh, Randall Morgan with the uh, Farm Service Agency there in, in Hopkinsville Service Center. Randall has, uh, has uh, retired after a long career. He was a mentor to me as I started uh, work in that community 22 years ago and uh, was proud to be able to stop in and, uh, and honor him after a, uh, a legacy of work that he did. I know he helped many of farmers in that community navigate the, uh, the challenging times in the 80s as well as many others getting started with what, uh, what they were doing. Had a chance to uh, speak to three uh, different chamber events, uh, the Owensboro Rooster Booster, and uh, you, that, that is a high-energy, high, hugely attended event in uh, Davis County. Uh, then uh, following that, did the uh, Henderson County Ag Breakfast and the uh, Henry County Farm to City Luncheon. All those were great because they were non-ag groups. It was a chance to showcase what this uh, ag development dollars have done over the last 22 years statewide and in each of these communities to, to show show uh, the impact in these uh, the communities where agriculture is so important and what they have done. And, uh, and in each of those presentations, I always uh, uh, include points in there to talk about the vision and the foresight that the General Assembly had in, in House Bill 611 with what you all were able to do, your, your predecessors and Senator Webb, you were, you were there uh, Im- implementing this uh, to, to set aside such a significant portion of these master settlement dollars to go back into the, the mission of diversifying Kentucky agriculture and growing our, our agriculture receipts. And it's great to see this with nearly $700 million that have been invested in majority of these in cost share programs. So we've been able to leverage over a billion dollars with, with public and private investment into our economy and see what we have done with both the diversification, taking tobacco from 25% of our gross receipts down to 4%, but almost doubling the uh, the overall pie there with, uh, with ag receipts at nearly $7 billion now. Uh, we were back in person at the Farm Machinery Show. I was uh, texting Executive Director David Beck uh, before this started to see what the head count was. We had 300,000 folks coming into the Expo Center this year to be part of the, the Farm Machinery Show. And it was great to be able to showcase the $13 million of investments in the Expo Center that uh, was appropriated from the, the General Assembly and administered through our office on what they have done. And we were able to have our Ag Development Board meeting uh, uh, in, in conjunction there, and uh, we had Mr. Beck speak with uh, with our board. Farmers markets are uh, the season has kicked back off uh, across the across the state. We were able to cut ribbons on three new ones just in the last thirty days. Rock Castle, Clark, and Pendleton County all had new farmers markets that have opened, and there are now, I believe, seventy two counties that have been able to participate with our programs uh, with call share fund funding from the state level, with some local funding in there, creating uh, markets uh, for producers to sell sell their produce. The uh, Ag Water Quality had their quarterly meeting uh, two weeks ago. We were back down in western Kentucky, and it was a great uh, opportunity to showcase conservation practices on a large uh, grain operation. We were at Joseph Sisk operation there in Christian County and uh, was able to to look at his uh, work with cover crops, waterways, and strip tilling. And uh, the last uh, uh, thing I want to mention is the uh, the CAPE trainings. That's, of course, our uh, county agriculture investment program that uh, is, is 
as I mentioned earlier with Sarah's, we've got 96 of those going on uh, last year. But we do uh, we did training this year, both uh, in person and virtual options, uh, literally across the state. We've uh, gone uh, east, west, and in central Kentucky, and we've got one more virtual one coming up. Uh, to date, we've had 180 different administrators of this programs and UK ag uh, and natural resource agents that have participated. And as uh, Sarah was able to confirm with me, we had participants from Ballard to Pike County at each of these meetings. So this has been a, a great uh, chance to talk about changes to the program as well as get feedback from those that are actually implementing this program at the, uh, the county level. We've talked a lot about meat processing. Uh, that my very first uh, a chance to come and visit with you all. We were talking about this program, and I'm proud to report to you all today that uh, two that have been new constructions have come online in the last month and have started processing. Uh, once under web up in your neighborhood there at uh, Greenup County, Tyler Wells AW Meat House is uh, is up and going. I was able to tour that uh, about six weeks before it opened. It's a state of the art facility, and I believe going to be a really uh, a benefit for for your region. And the, uh, the second one was in Muhlenberg County, uh, Farmstead Butcher Block. And uh, same thing, started uh, processing now and uh, uh, is, is fully in function. So where we've talked about the increased capacity of what we were going to do, I've, I've made the, the footnote to each of those is once they all come online. Well, they, they are online now and, uh, and still not able to meet up uh, with demand. We have waiting list at, uh, at each and every one of these. The master settlement uh, dollars have now been received and allocated to each of the counties. Uh, we are up from last year. Total dollars coming in as $129 million. That's up from $126 uh, last year. The, uh, the amount allocated to the Ag Development Fund is $48.2 million. This is an 8% increase from where we were, uh, we were at last year. $29,157,719 are at the state level and nineteen. million million ninety two thousand nine hundred and fifty six are designated county funds but I want to point out uh, we've talked uh, uh, here multiple times about the allocation to lower counties that uh, that have not received thirty thousand dollars you I believe this everybody in this committee is aware two two counties have historically been excluded because they had no no barley tobacco uh, Pike and Knott County had received no funds uh, until 2019 when the Ag Development Board made the decision to bring every county up to at least thirty thousand dollars dollars. Uh, this year, with the additional money, there were a few counties that had 30 now on their, their own. I believe last year, Marshall uh, only needed 200 to bring them up, uh, Representative Brad, to get them to the 30,000. This year, with the increase, they were over that amount, so we only have 19. These largely are far east and far west counties. Uh, across there, you look, uh, Pike and Knott got the full 30,000, and I, then I thought the next two on my list, uh, Fulton and Floyd. So again, going, going completely across the state, got over 29. 9,000 as their allocation was just a few hundred dollars. Webster County uh, received the lowest. They only needed 5,800 to bring them up to the 30,000. So this continues to be one that uh, we, we receive strong feedback from each of these 19 counties and appreciation of the state funds, bringing them up to a level to where they can make some impactful investments in their, in their community. And uh, lastly, I want to thank Representative Reed for being at our last Ag Development Board meeting, and I, I would like to extend an invitation to each and every one of you. Uh, 10 a.m. the third Friday of every month, Bill and I are being humbled by the Ag Development Board uh, on a, a monthly basis, and uh, and we invite you all to be there any chance your schedule allows or any time as these agendas are made public uh, in advance that there's something on there that's of uh, interest to you or to any of your constituents. It's a great chance to, to interact with uh, with a great board and uh, we'll even feed you lunch at the end of it i think brian we also want to invite staff too kelly's been there before so lunch is usually pretty good so appreciate you staff being there. yeah we we appreciate uh uh any in any and all interest in this and we uh, we appreciate uh what what this group does both uh, the members of the committee and the staff and we do have quite a few projects, programs, to, uh, and amendments to go over with you. And so Bill and I will try to work through this and, and tag team it and go through. And we'll take uh, any, any questions uh, now and then uh, as we go along. Bill, yes, Bill, before we begin with your presentation, we yes, do sir. have some questions from committee members. Uh, Senator Webb. 
not a question so much as I, I was going to, since you mentioned, I was going to brag on A&W Meats and the Wells family and the what they've been through the past few years uh, with COVID and the uncertain economic future. And I mean, this was a dream of Tyler and his family and, and it... Um, see grown man cry with his ribbon cutting this week i'm serious it, it was just so moving and touching in the support that we had from across the region the media all the positiveness of that project and you know tyler wasn't afraid to ask for help he wanted to do the best he could and have everybody included and he did it he did it right and, and you all uh made that dream come true and we you know vicariously made that dream come true uh, but it, it just meant so much, and and it is state of the art. If anybody's got any tips, he's put a lot of time and effort into it, as you can attest. And and it's just such a boon for our region and the support. Uh, like I said, we had cattlemen from all all over the region mm -hmm. there. I've already reserved a slot or two, <laughs> and uh, but it, it's going to make such a difference. It makes such a difference, and the community just loves it. And I mean, th this is where we see the the purpose of what we do. And it just was very meaningful to me to see that family realize a dream uh, with and going through the past few years. And you all uh, helped make that happen. You made it happen for them. And, and this is the kind of thing that it was intended to do. And I'm just glad that brought some ba things back to Northeast Kentucky um, for our heavily tobacco-impacted region and, and have uh, examples like Tyler work in this program. So I just want to thank you all, all of the team, for – for doing that and and uh, there's a video of the ribbon cutting on my Facebook page and it, it's just it's very it, it it'll remind you why you do what you do but thank you well thank you Senator Webb and that's a it's a good reminder we sit here and we talk about projects and they have a number beside them and they've got uh, they got a dollar value but there's a human interest story in each and every one of these that we talk about and Senator Webb my understanding there's a slaughter facility in that area harvest facility it's closing down so that they're going to coordinate their shutdown with tyler starting up which we've had two shut down recently and tyler what he did he brought in he hired a lot of the employees from those entities so he hit the, he's hitting the ground running he's got an experienced mm -hmm. team on the ground and he's really filled the void for those families as well and the the service that was provided by the two that have you know retired or aged out, mm -hmm. and and uh, so yes, that's another uh, good point, and he's employing people. And just for y'all's information, so he was approved for two hundred fifty thousand dollars as a forgivable loan, and they also utilize our Kentucky Ag Finance Loan Program. Uh, we, he was approved for seven hundred fifty-five thousand dollars, working with his local lender to finance that whole project which is two million dollars so it's going to be a really nice facility with some uh, capacity up there to service the livestock producers in that area representative king Rep uh, representative king thank you mr chair um may i just have a little bit more information about those counties that are i call them kind of like equalizing dollars the, the mm -hmm. how are those counties implementing um their dollars any bit different than the the counties that traditionally had tobacco i'm just curious what kind of uh, well you know the, each they county have. has a county council and that was interesting you know, brian brought up uh, uh not knox not county and and uh, pike county who had required to have county council members identify county council members which is nine county council members but hadn't had any money or hadn't been allocated any money, so they even though they had to meet that requirement of the the statute. So as Brian mentioned, 2019, the Ag Development Board committed some state money and gave them two years to invest the money. So there's a little bit of a learning curve there and working with the extension agents in the counties across the state. But for the first time, uh, Pike County and Knott County were able to administer the CAPE program, cost share program for their producers and one uh, cost sh uh, cost share area that really piqued their interest is cost sharing on boundary fen fencing uh, senator parrot which is not an eligible cost share item in any other state or federal uh, program and so this was an opportunity for them for to utilize the money now that was in eastern kentucky i think even floyd county did uh, administer the cape as well in uh, western or western kentucky 
in uh, Hickman County, they committed, they put all their chips, it was $40,000 they accumulated, not only brought them up to 30000 but they had some money they'd been rolling over, and that was all invested in the Hickman County High School uh, project, uh, a project to support their welding program and different, well, it wasn't a greenhouse. And then in Fulton County, it was a greenhouse project at the high school. So they saw it windfall of money, and the leadership in Fulton County said this would be a good investment. And to date, I think we're over 60 greenhouse projects across the state utilizing county money. So. Brian, I had a phone call yesterday. What are you being approached there within the office uh, uh, from uh, farmers there in West Kentucky with disaster recovery uh I know I've I've had several reach out to me. Uh, Their insurance coverage is not equaling Mm -hmm. what the cost is now to replace due to uh, the inflation that we're uh, going through. I had a gentleman yesterday uh, actually spoke with an insurance agent uh, who has one of our Christian County farmers covered. They had a building that two years ago when it was built was $45,000 to build. Uh, after the uh, tornado took it, wiped it out to replace that building, it's over a hundred thousand dollars. And their insurance, the the shortfall there in their coverage is not coming close. I know we we saw it at home with uh, individuals, but are you hearing much from agriculture from from the farmers or the ag businesses there concerning granaries, things like that, have lost legs? No, I'm, I'm hearing the same things you have heard uh, with that. I've, I've helped uh, navigate some things at the federal level, just in, in an education standpoint, just from what I've, I've been aware of from, from my past. But there's not been anything that has been a specific application or an ask for any ag development funds. And, and in fact, if there were, I would, I would have to educate that, that this has not been the intent of these funds for 22 years. And until we're given different direction, we would not be looking at doing those things. What I think will come out of this and where we'll see ag development play is in the innovation that comes forward. Is the, These folks are going to make some hard decisions when they're looking at information like that and saying, I'm not going to be able to, to be indemnified, really. I cannot bring back where I was. So I may be looking at what what should I be doing and that's where I think that our funds will be there to uh, to go with these new ideas new projects and new things that come back representative well, Dawson we did have a request through ag finance to, to help refinance a rebuild on a poultry operation that was destroyed so it wasn't a, a project that we originally had a loan with but on the refinance to rebuild the project, we work with lender to provide up to $250,000 in our low interest loan program. Right now, the interest rate's 2.75 as our participation on all our loan programs. As you all are aware, interest rates are, are uh, moving up, and so it makes our program attractive from that standpoint. Well, I know from what we've done here with the legislature, uh, within the legislature, sending uh, uh, legislation to the governor's desk that he signed concerning the two hundred million dollars that we put uh, forward toward disaster recovery. This this tornado is a gift that keeps giving. Uh, it seems like every day something new is coming uh, uh, coming at us. And whether you're looking at individuals that have lost their homes, businesses, agriculture, uh, the the impact is going to be large and it's going to be long lasting of what we're seeing. As I said, it seems every day there's a new uh, a new question or a new problem that uh, that has arisen. So uh, 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 it will be something that I know we'll all be working on uh, here as we move through the future, but I did want to just ask you that question, and uh, I think it'd be something that I will get in touch with you later in the summer and let's just kind of go over because uh, of what we saw there across West Kentucky from Bowling Green all the way back toward Illinois. All right. Thank you, Chairman. Bill? All right. If we'll get started, we're going to tag team on some of these uh, projects. So we're starting with the December Ag Development Board meeting. We'll start with page one, update on board action regarding uh, programs. So you can see four CAPE applications were approved and one youth ag incentive program for $316,228. And 
The CAPE program has been the most popular program in Best County money. So Brian mentioned $19 million is allocated to the county. It's probably 80 to 85 percent of that county money will be committed to the CAPE program. This vehicle for investing the money has been around since 2009 as a menu approach to provide cost share programs or funds for any enterprise in the uh, county. Uh, just a comment on the Youth Ag Incentive Program. This is a program we developed about six years ago. It makes it uh, easier for the counties to commit and support youth activities. It's going to be mostly a purchase of livestock. Some horticulture production is eligible and then helps them with uh, showing animals. So encourages them and supports in the show of livestock. And that's going to be important as we talk about a project later down the road or uh, that we're going to talk about later here uh, this morning, a uh, million dollars invested in a project in, at, the, at the fairgrounds. So we'll talk a little bit about that when it comes up. Uh, moving on to uh, page two, just an amendment. So you can see Franklin County Cattlemen Association, they administer the, the CAPE program in Franklin County. So they request an additional 4300 $81, bringing the total $165,606. And then for Mason County, uh, Representative Roberts, that's the Buffalo Area Development District that administers the program in several counties in that area. So that brought the, after the amendment, brought it up to $240,158. Uh, moving to page three. We've got Alve Alveos Cuban Meats. They requested $393,000 to purchase equipment to expand their wholesale ham meat processing business that was operated out of their, out of their home base and uh, requesting funds to expand. And you can see the total project cost is $827,000 uh, funds from a, securing funds from a, a bank and uh, other other sources the ag development board or the, the committee process that we work through all applications that come in during the month and by the last friday of every month then are forwarded to or referred to a committee of board members and they review all applications and then referred to the to the board the next month so they approve this project for a hundred thousand dollars as a forgivable loan so the difference between a grant and a forgivable loan if we have a structured as a forgivable loan that allows us in our web to utilize a UCC filing or a mortgage, depending on if there's a, a real estate or building involved in it, a way to hold the applicant to the performance standards or the criteria approved by the board. So, uh, again, this is a $100,000 forgivable loan. To receive the funds and part of the terms and conditions, they have to provide a copy of the contract of the property, a certificate of occupancy, a proof of financing for the whole project, and then a signed copy of the Ag Development uh, of a mortgage and UCC filing. And one last thing, as part of the 100000 forgivable, to earn the forgiveness, they have to, uh, they're going to uh, they're, they're source their hogs to local producers to be processed at trackside meat in Henry County. And for every... Uh, uh, hog that they are able to purchase directly from farmers and process through trackside, they get a $50 credit. So they would have to process or identify that they, they've purchased 2,000 hogs to meet the forgiveness over five years. And to clarify, that's Kentucky hog, so they, they have to be sourced in state. All right, on page four. Uh, Chairman, you set up uh, uh, one to continue talking about uh, West Kentucky. This is the Caldwell County uh, Board of Education, uh, an application to uh, uh, for $22,000 of county funds uh, that's part of a $172,000 project that will also include uh, rural development uh, as, as well in this uh, the source of funds uh, for a, an expansion, a, a replacement, and update of the greenhouse there with the high school. Uh, this is my alma mater. I was a graduate of Caldwell County High. I'm trying to remember the greenhouse we had, so it's kind of sad when I think this one came after me and we're already now having to replace it, kind of showing the, the mileage I'm getting on me. Uh, but this is going to be one of our, our uh, largest uh, uh, projects uh, to date with what uh, what they're looking at doing. But the, the point is to make this a more inclusive project, to have, uh, it being handicap accessible and um, and more uh, more options and opportunities for the uh, the students they're working with it. 
the challenging part talking about this one today, uh, Wes York is the, uh, the FFA advisor that made this application. He passed away Saturday. He graduated a year ahead of me at uh, Caldwell County, and he was the, uh, the, uh, the ag teacher and the FFA advisor there and was the applicant here in this, uh, or the one that signed the application for the Board of Education, and his funeral is this afternoon. So as we talk about a community that suffered a lot of loss with the, the tornado, in fact, he went into the, the hospital, I think, three days before uh, the tornado hit and did not leave the hospital. It was 155, 160 days. Uh, <coughs> but died from uh, complications there. So continue to keep that community and especially that family in your, in your prayers. And uh, the greenhouses, we talked about that earlier in Bill's comments. And I saw uh, Representative King there talk think, uh, about those. Those have been a very popular uh, program, and I think we've done 60 uh, to, to date with these across the, across the state. Next, I'll move on to page six. It's Udell, Inc. This is a botanical garden in Oldham County. And if anybody's traveled the interstate in that area, they have a brown sign up there. So they're established a business and they requested funds and were approved for $90,950 to invest in surface water, water harvesting type project. And they indicated this information will be available in some educational sessions. Uh, one of the requirements is providing uh, five years of outreach to uh, make available to nurseries. They've indicated there's 400 uh, certified or registered nurse nurseries in the state could benefit. Some of those nurseries are located on farms, so they would have access to learning more about harvesting water off of the, a, a greenhouse roof or having some kind of reservoir holding tanks uh, so that's one of the reasons the, the board was interested in this. And to tell you a little bit about the the uh, executive director, his qualifications is Dr. Capaluo. He's been there 20 years. He's got a Ph.D. in horticulture production, so very skilled at this type of business and done a great job in fundraising. That's very important in these type of nonprofit uh, enterprises. Uh, we'll be working with – he will be working with – uh, Oldham County Extension Service, as well as Kentucky Horticulture Council. That's one entity that we fund with state state funds. Dr. Cindy Fennison will help with the outreach on uh, showing uh, nurseries or greenhouse type operations more about uh, harvesting uh, rainwater for, and it it also reduces the dependence on the local munis municipality. Representative Pratt. All right, on page six is the, the next project, uh, REDS. This was an application for uh, $240,000 in state funds and 10000 in county funds to aid in building a farmer's market pavilion uh, for existing producers to utilize. This, uh, this, this application was uh, re recommended a no fund by the, uh, the committee and the board's decision to, uh, to no fund this. Uh, did not meet the uh, the guidelines to what our current farmers market program is. Uh, again, we've got over 70 counties plus I think 72 is what uh, what we have cut cut ribbons on in counties across the state, and the majority of all these have been to nonprofits working with uh, municipal uh, in the in the community. This one was uh, going to be a uh, uh, on a on a private uh, landowner's property and uh, the Ag Development Board had already supported a farmer's market in this, this community. And that concluded our first month there, so moving to January. All right, so we'll start page one. You can see four counties were approved for the CAPE program, one for next uh, generation, so this helps make money available, targets beginning farmers under between 18 and 40 years old. So it doesn't have them competing with in the CAPE program. Again, it's a way for a county to target uh, beginning farmers. And then shared use equipment in Breckenridge County, that money was used to purchase an inline bell wrapper. So that brings us $914,700 approved by the Ag Development Board. Looking at page two, we've got two amendments. We've got the Green River Area Beef Improvement Group. They administer the CAPE program in, in four counties. In addition to Davis, it's Webster, McLean, and Henderson. So there's an amendment of $128,058, bringing total to $178,058. Interesting approach on their, on their funding, making available to producers. They do a prorated approach. 
center parrot. So uh, anyone that scores over 44, then they just they allocate or prorate uh, the money in the 44 county area. And then McLean County also amended their cape to bring it to a total of $85,253. And then on page uh, three, we've got the University of Kentucky Research Foundation was approved for $250,000 in state funds to conduct a panel and economic analysis on the market for underutilized woods. And you can see the one area they're concentrating on is cross laminated timber. So now, Representative Reed, if you're wondering what is cross laminated timber, let me read read you the definition of it. And this is using underutilized. So we all know, you know, one of the big demands in the forestry uh, is white oak for the for the bourbon industry. So now they're looking at okay, how can we use these other secondary uh, timber? And so they're looking at this cross laminated timber is a prefabricated wood panel consisting of layered dimension cut lumber placed in layers perpendicular to one another. Each layer is joined with an adhesive before being pressed together at high pressure. Cross laminated timber commonly is used in structural application for long spans in walls, floors, and roofs. The one thing I've enjoyed about this job in 21 years is you get to learn a lot of things, a lot, a lot, a lot of different projects. And so this is one example. And they cite there's 430,000 timber owners here in the state. Also, of the Appalachian area, 50, 54 counties are considered part of the Appalachian region, also known as the SOAR region. 80% is covered in timber. So this could be an opportunity to utilize underutilized uh, or secondary uh, woods. I think that's the only project we approved. Yeah, that was the only one in January. Uh, we do have a question, Representative King. All right. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I think it's more of a comment about the, what was that new term for me again, the cross? Cross laminated timber, and you can Google it as well. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes, very good. In uh, just a comment about that project, I would ask that that panel that's going to be researching that to really look into if it's um, valuable for food grade um, process or or, or use. That mm -hmm. seems like the ones you mentioned of uh, laminating floors and walls and that mm -hmm. kind of thing, but. If we're going to consider storing some kind of food in that, when we talked about the adhesive and some uh -huh. of the other materials, so is it food safe? safe yes, I think that's, is what you're, okay. that's what I will just ask them to really be cautious about that and make sure that it's worthy of being used with okay. foods. That's my only comment. Thank you. Good, good comment. All right, ready to move on to February. All right, page one of the February report. So. We have the three counties approved for CAPE, one for next generation, one for sh uh, shared use, and then one for the Youth Ag Incentive Program, totaling $609,952. Then we had three amendments here. So Jessamine County FFA Alumni Association, they administer the, the CAPE program in Jessamine County. A longtime uh, farmer involved in, in providing the leadership on that, Carl Waits. Uh, has been doing this since it uh, originated. So this was a, a request to provide $80,000, bringing it up to 180000 Marion County Conservation District amendment of 30000 bringing it to 210000 And then Barron County adding 46000 to the 350000 previously approved, bringing the $396,000. And speaking of Barron County, based on the formula distribution of the tobacco funds, Barron County is the number one tobacco dependent county based on that formula used back in 98-99 uh, uh, based on how many tobacco bases, how much tobacco pounds they sold. So they're the number one county. Of the $19 million distributed to counties, I think it's 21 receive over 300000 and then one receives four hundred, and that's Barron County. All right, and then moving on to page three, we give you an update. This is a quarterly update on the on-farm energy incentives program. So to be eligible for this program for state funds, they have to be investing in uh, equipment or technology. I guess we could say ag tech 
uh, has been available through this program for about over 10 years, Senator Parrott. And so, again, if they're making investment in equipment technology and we have a certified energy manager or professional energy, energy, energy engineer review the application, if the payback is less than 25 years, then that meets one of the criteria. So we have uh, five applications here. The first one, uh, Creekland Farms, that was an investment in the grain dryer, so they're eligible for the maximum of $10,000. They can also apply for a federal grant with the REAP program up to 25%. Uh, Convoy Enterprises, that was an investment of solar panels, and they provide dead animal removal pickup. They're op they're, uh, located in Fayette County. We did visit with them, and they also do crematory services. So if you've got a, I think mostly that day they had uh, equine was a big part of their business being in Fayette County. You can have your uh, your your companion uh, horse center web cremated for for a charge in, in a nice little wooden box there. We did learn this charge by the pound, so Bill and I would have been two different prices. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, moving on here, the one project in Graves County was a poultry operation upgrading uh, heaters. And then in Jessamine County, this was an investment in solar panels to offset the electricity cost of supporting his, his egg lane operation in Jessamine County. So this is a free range operation, kind of unique in uh, Jessamine County, providing eggs to uh, grocers in the Fayette County area. So I use that to, obviously, if you're harvesting eggs every day, you have to put them in a cooler, electricity to operate that, so the solar panels would offset that, that cost. And then the last one in Marion County is a dairy producer upgrading equipment in operation. So that was a total of $43,775. And again, they're, they're eligible for max half the cost of the project up to $10,000, and then we'll compensate them for the cost of the the energy assessment by the professional engineer of $150. All right. Thank you, Bill. On page four, be the first approved project. Uh, I mentioned in my, my comments on our outreach uh, effort during the, the winter months that we attended the Grain Day uh, program in Davis County, and uh, this was $5,000 of county money that was uh, approved for funding uh, to go towards uh, putting on this event. The uh, application uh, indicated it could be up to 600 producers or agribusinesses uh, attending. We were not quite to that level, but uh, it was still a, a big, I would estimate, close to 400 uh, were, were part of this program this year. It's a reoccurring uh, request and uh, one that has had continued success. Page five, uh, Logan Premium Meats and Processing. This originally was uh, an application. It was going to be a new uh, processor coming online in Logan County, but throughout their work, they ended up uh, purchasing a going concern in a long-established business uh, right there in uh, the, the backyard there, Chairman Dawson and uh, Senator Westerfield uh, in Hopkinsville, but uh, Hampton's Meat has been around for nearly 50 years. I think the sign says 1973 on the uh, on the front, and uh, they, this group has uh, has purchased this and are looking to continue the operation, uh, but doing some significant uh, upgrades and expansions to what they're what they're doing, and that was uh, 250 thousand dollars of state funds and a forgivable loan. All right, moving on to page six in the continuing with the meat processing theme here. In Shelby County, an individual, Kevin Clark, requested $35,660 to expand his operation, include a walk-in freezer, smoker, stuffer, uh, as a service to livestock producers, mostly hog producers. He's been, he start, he's a startup business that did deer processing, and now because if you start up any kind of harvesting business, you're going to get calls from local producers representing the king saying, can you process my hog? Can you process my beef? So he saw an opportunity to expand his business and the services that he offered. And he was approved for $35,616. And all these meat processors, to tell you, Senator Webb, they're scheduled out into 2023. Uh, the demand is just continues to be huge. Page seven, uh, project TNL Land Holdings. 
one of the uh, continued objectives by the, the state board is the, the need for more veterinarians, especially in our rural and underserved markets. This application uh, also, uh, Chairman, came about kind of with your, your question. Here was a disaster and innovation came out of it with um, uh, a fire that had destroyed uh, a, a older barn on, uh, on this uh, veterinarian's family property. They uh, decided when they were rebuilding to uh, to add a facility there with a chute, sorting pins, and um, and and scales to be uh, be part of a, a facility where they can work on on um, animals there, giving a central point to bring for multiple counties. This uh, had uh, seventeen thousand eight hundred seventeen dollars of state funds and forty five thousand in county funds, which I, I like that uh, leverage of the state dollars there to encourage a regional project. Multiple counties stepping up in a in nearly a three to one county to state funding to uh, to build this uh, this facility that will benefit uh, give a point where producers can bring cattle without having to haul them all the way into to Lexington, and uh, the the. Loan forgiveness for that seventeen thousand comes from the uh, the number of head they're actually working through there on a given uh, given year. Next page eight, Bill uh, already gave a I guess a preview of this one coming up uh, when talking about the million dollar um, grant to the Kentucky Expedition Exposition Foundation. Starting, I believe, in 2017, the championship drive uh, with the State Fair replaced the sale of champions, which uh, had taken place for a number of years with the culmination of the winners of the livestock show. This gave an expansion from where, with the sale of champions, only eight winners were able to participate in show dollars for showing their, their livestock, now to where uh, 80 students will uh, be able to participate in financial awards from the showing of the livestock. This money had been raised uh, year on year by, by private donations. The request to the Ag Development Board was for matching funds to come in with a, a, a private investment to create an endowment that would generate generate uh, interest and dividends, earnings uh, from the, this portfolio to support the annual, um, the annual cost of, of these prizes. So the, uh, the, the board awarded a uh, million dollars subject to uh, foundation matching dollars of private investment. And as Bill pointed out, this, uh, this really complements the youth programs that we have going on across the state. As I mentioned in talking about the workload that Sarah covers, we had 28 different youth programs that we ran this past year. They ultimately are working towards uh, being able to compete at this, uh, this state level. And there will be other uh, prizes that will come off for other youth programs as part of the, uh, the state fair. But again, all the, the, this is limited to Kentucky youth uh, that are participating in this uh, this program. Uh, Bill, uh, we have a question here from Senator Webb, please. Well, I just I have a comment. I, I want to uh, thank you all uh, for the. Well, I want to thank Dr. Jolly. Uh, I'm just hoping to see him this afternoon at the farm in Woodford County. But uh, th this is a great project, and I, I think it's, uh, like you said, came out of uh, disaster, but it's innovation, and it's going to be a really good thing. Anything we can do to our animal veterinarians that still make farm calls, I think we need to do that. So I appreciate that. But I'm a member of the Kentucky Exposition Foundation, uh, for the sake of full disclosure, and, and we have a meeting this afternoon. And this has uh, been a high priority for, for the foundation and uh, to maintain the commitment to youth, youth livestock. And I know many of us through the years have set and, and wanted to preserve the, uh, the priority in the grand scheme of things in Louisville uh, with the entities uh, for youth livestock and, and the legacy of livestock and the impact throughout the Commonwealth. So I think this is the mechanism uh, to help do that and I appreciate the consideration of the board. Uh, Senator Webb, I think Brian signed that legal agreement today, triggers the, the check being dispersed, so I think you can let him know the check's in the mail. So, <laughs> And very quickly, I want to add to that. When you hear these youth that participate in this program there before age, that being able, that it encourages them even more for more more to follow behind them to want to be involved because we've seen the number decrease over the last few years and I know I watch uh, my granddaughter right now who is becoming involved herself and uh, and the communication these kids have 
between each other. It just grows that enthusiasm and for those young people to want to participate. Well, very good. I appreciate both those testimonials on the project. All right, next we're on page nine. It's the McLean County Cooperative Extension Board was approved for $2,000 in county money to contract a specialist from the University of Georgia to educate the, uh, po the poultry producers there in McLean County and identified ventilation system as the, as the priority and would do some uh, farm visits. And they've had uh, McLean County... Uh, the contact on this project is, is Nancy, Nancy Butler. She's a longtime poultry producer, and she's had ongoing uh, business relationship with the University of Georgia and the specialists coming up there and helping them identify uh, issues and solving different uh, issues that they have. All right, next, moving on to uh, page 10, we've got Palmer, Meat, Palmer Farms Meats, LLC. The, this is for to support the, the purchase of this sheep harvesting business there in uh, in actually the, the, the buyers are farmers there in uh, Callaway County. The, the business is in uh, basically in downtown Benton and Marshall uh, County. It's been a long-term business uh, processing, harvesting uh, sheep and for the for the barbecue business. If anybody been to Owensboro, uh, Moonlight Barbecue, the the product probably originated here at uh, Palmer Meats. The owner actually lives in, or the the seller lives in Tennessee, so he's selling it to a uh, the the the, uh, the Palmer family here in uh, in. Uh, Marshall County, Callaway County, and they're so it's going to go from a Tennessee owner to a Kentucky ownership processing sheep. Now the business model of the seller was brings in tractor trailer loads of sheep out of state and then processes them through the week. They're going to continue that business model, but uh, hopefully their or their plans are to buy or purchase more sheep from uh, Kentucky and expand that part of their their business. So. Uh, processing the sheep through the business, selling to the barbecue industry in western Kentucky. And they also do bison. That's one of our few that uh, that have a regular buffalo uh, uh, going through there with uh, 45 to 50 head a year. And uh, meeting with the family, they're what, third generation tobacco producers that said they're going to give up tobacco as they transition into the meat processing business. All right, then next is page 11. We've got the Davis County Lions Cub Fair that was approved for $5,000 to use their county money to offset the premiums for agriculture exhibits at the uh, Davis County Fair. $5,000 in county money. All right, moving on to page 12. It's the Metcalf County 4-H Council. This is a recurring project of $1,709 in county money to support the Metcalf County ham project for the for the youth and you can see to be eligible for the funds they have to give a, a speech to be able to get their second ham and this process goes all through the year and leads up and culmination at the uh, state fair yeah i think that concludes that concludes that ready to move on to the march board meeting all right, page one, we've got the different programs are approved. Seven for the CAPE. We had three deceased farm animal removal applications approved, two for shared use, and one for the youth program for a total of $1,130,083. All right. We had two, two amendments. Justman County added a, their second amendment to their CAPE application, so I added $24,500 to bring it to $204,500. And then Car Carter County Conservation District, Senator Webb, they administer the CAPE program in your home county. So amended it, $33,756, bringing it total to $164,048. And that was the March board meeting. All right, going into the April board meeting. So we... Uh, one county for the Cape, one county deceased 
Farm manual removal, one shared use equipment, and one youth program. Total two hundred four thousand two hundred twenty-three dollars. On page two, the amendments. So Northern Kentucky Cattlemen's Association, Representative Roberts, they amended their cape to include twenty-five thousand thirty-five dollars to bring the total to one hundred thirty thousand four hundred and eighty dollars. And then Spencer County amended their application not with dollars but to request it to prorate among all applicants at or above a minimum score and increase the producer maximum to thirty five hundred dollars so i believe it was originally it was three thousand and to change that maximum they have to request an amendment so no dollars involved just changing the way they presented it all right then next is on page three we've got the alliance packing company llc this is a a, a startup business by some uh, experienced uh, producers, Brent and Rhonda Cornett, 20 years experience in, in farming, last six years in the produce. They're partnering with a group of farmers and company out of Florida to grow produce and distribute produce. So the, the company in Florida is Alliance Packing Florida, and they have working relationships with Walmart, Kroger, and uh, grocery stores of that size are distributors. And what they, they've started their business in Florida, and now they want to, these farmers in Florida, want to expand the business into Kentucky, uh, where this will be located on the Cornets Farms, $400,000 for, for uh, cooling packaging equipment, is strategically London is a good location as far as a distribution, bringing in produce, shipping out produce, and truckload amounts. Now, this is set up as a forgivable loan, so they, they get forgiveness. It's based on, it's over a five-year forgiveness. They get, they earn forgiveness by every box that they process of other farmers, 50 cents a box, that works towards their forgiveness of the $400,000. They do not, do not get credit if they're marketing their own uh, produce. So incentivize them to uh, work with other producers and provide market opportunities for farmers that need these kind of resources to be able to uh, fit into a distribution center that can, that can ship truckloads of produce. That's what the Walmarts and the Kroger's of the world want. They don't want to uh, work with multiple producers delivering at their dock. They want truckloads of product. And I think that concludes our report. Thank you, Bill and Brian. I appreciate it very much. Do we have any questions from the members? Co-chair Emery, nothing you, anything you'd like to add? No, uh, waiting for our discussion of the next meeting. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I can help you on that. Thank you both very much. It's always, always good to see you. We've missed you since December. <laughs> and uh, actually, I, uh, I think we did. Did we meet in December? December's been a December's from December through January was a little bit uh, out of sorts <laughs> there at my house. So uh, forgive me right there. Uh, we will be meeting June 16th at 1030. That will be our next meeting date. And uh, once again, I want to thank all of you for being here. Thank you to our staff. They do a fantastic job. And uh, do I have a motion for us to adjourn? So moved. So moved.